Hello, my name is Evan Bullion. I'm a senior research software engineer in the Capereso lab, and I'm going to be talking about Galaxy. So Galaxy is an open source community-led project which provides a web-based interface for interacting with data-intensive biomedical applications. It's a hosted platform, so that means that there are basically some systems administrators who set up and deploy a Galaxy server, which then users can interact with. And there's many of these. So if we look at um, galaxyproject.org slash use, we can see all of the different Galaxy servers which are publicly available. You can see there's over 169 of them. And they range from everything from using Anvil on the cloud platform to taxonomic research or biocompute objects. There's all kinds of tools out there, and each Galaxy server is going to be a little bit different. In addition to that, there's probably the most well-known one, which is usegalaxy.org. And so this, when you think of Galaxy, this might be what you're familiar with, and it comes with a variety of um, well-known tools we can look at different kinds of analyses, um, for instance, virology, and maybe we want to do pangolin. And so this is a free server that you can use, and it's probably the best known one. Now, for this workshop, we've set up our own server, which you'll be interacting with. And this server uses Chime 2. So the way Galaxy works is it creates a web form or interface that you can interact with for every tool. And what a tool is, is some XML document which explains to Galaxy how it should go and execute some command line program. And so if a developer were to write a tool, then users get to interact with a web browser instead of trying to figure out how to use a command line. And so this is really nice. As an example, you can kind of see this um, tool description of Pangolin on the right. Now, Chime 2 is actually not too different. But instead of tools, we have plugins, and these plugins have actions. So what we can do is we can think of each plugin and action as its own Galaxy tool. We also happen to generate our interfaces from some description. And so we're able to basically generate tools from our own actions. The way this is possible is because we have a architecture for plugins and interfaces. So at the core, we have the framework. And so it provides kind of the different APIs or application programming interfaces for these different components. And so interfaces talk to the framework, and plugins are described through these framework objects. And so with that, it's possible to generate an interface. Q2 Galaxy is our interface for Galaxy. And so something important to kind of think about is that these Galaxy tools are typically written and maintained by developers. So some developer is typically going to be writing out the XML that tells Galaxy how to execute some command line program. Q2 Galaxy does this a little bit differently. So because Chime 2 interfaces are able to generate themselves based on what plugins are available and what they say they do, Q2 Galaxy can generate 154 tools from 22 plugins in about 7 seconds. So that is a massive amount of um, development time that would be needed otherwise to write all 154 XML tools by hand. Instead, we can generate this automatically. And so what this looks like is Q2 Galaxy generates some XML documents, and so these are the Galaxy tools. Galaxy then, if configured to use these tools, will interpret and display them to the user. The user happily doesn't need to know about any of this, and they can just work in a really nice web-based user interface. And because these actions, or these uh, tool XML files, describe how to run a command line program, Q2 Galaxy also serves as that command line program that we'll be running. And so this makes it very straightforward to develop Q2 Galaxy, because we always know what kind of XML we're generating, and we can interpret any parameters that we provide to that XML because it's what we wrote. Now, we've set up a Galaxy host with Chime 2 already configured for the purposes of this workshop. Um, and that means that after this workshop is done, we're actually going to take that down and you will no longer have access to it. But because Galaxy is open source software um, and designed to be hosted, you can actually host it yourself. For instructions on how to do that, I have a video 
um, on setting up Gal Galaxy through Docker on Windows 10, as well as instructions for just using Docker if you're perhaps already familiar with that tool. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at our workshop server. Okay, so to get started with Galaxy, we're going to start on the home page. And so you'll probably see something that looks like this. The name of your particular server is going to be different from mine. This is just a testing server while we record these videos. On the left, we have our tools. You can search a tool. You can use any of these tools in these headings. And so if we wanted to use a plugin like alignment, we would expand this. And we see there are three tools, maft, maft add, and mask. There are a number of these and you know you can use the one you need to. And if you're not quite sure where it is, a way to know is to look at the tool that you need. So maybe it would say Chime 2 Alignment. It's going to be under this heading Chime 2 Alignment. And then you can find your action, which will be mapped, mapped add, or mask. If we needed, for instance, a Chime 2 Emperor plot, we would scroll down until we find Emperor, expand that, and then we would click on plot. Now, the way these tools work is you click on it, and you have in now the main content, the tool form. And so here you would provide inputs, you would provide any parameters, there may be additional options. And so you can look at what parameters are available, read the help text, and execute. It is also um, advisable to read the text down here, which is gonna give you a description for like what exactly the action is. If we look at a more complicated one, let's say Dada 2 denoise paired, we see there's a lot more options here and a lot more information. And so it's always good to read and try and understand what exactly all these parameters are doing, um, especially even the default parameters. So while those may be already set, it can be helpful to know at least what assumptions the tool is making. You can also read the descriptions and what kinds of outputs you will have. On the right, we have our history. So I'm going to go back to the home page now by pressing this home button, just so we're not too distracted. So looking at the history, we have usually we start out with nothing here. So this is what you'll see is an empty history. As we perform work, we're going to be adding files to this history and generating files which will show up in the history. I have an example of a history I've already worked with, and so I can show you that by managing my histories up here. I'm going to view all histories and we can see I have a history called this is old work. I could switch to it. I could rename it. I can kind of use any of these elements or if I was managing history, let me switch back to this unnamed one. So I might call this my new history. I can move things into it. So the way that works is you can only drag into the current history, but let's suppose I wanted our sample metadata. I can drag and drop that right there. So now I have some sample metadata. Maybe I would also like a table, so I could grab that and put it over there. Going back home, we see those items are now in our history, um, and they start with these numbers. So every element in your history is given an ID number which increments. So our first element is one sample metadata, second is chime2 uh, data2 denoise paired on data84 table QZA. Now that name doesn't necessarily make a lot of sense, Ta data84. We don't have a data84 here, but that's because this came from its own history. So what we might want to do is actually just rename this. So we might edit the attributes using the edit button. We might just call it table QZA maybe that's a sufficient name. Um, inside of here we can add additional information but mostly all we want to do normally is change the name. So now I'll save that and so now we see we have table and sample metadata. Let's suppose we wanted to actually run an action. Well I might use feature table summarize as an example and you'll do this in detail um, in a tutorial but to get started we look at this, we see Galaxy has already auto-populated the input. This is something that's both convenient and you want to watch out for. 
because it is going to pick the most recent data that fits. And what do I mean by fit? Well, if I expand this table QZA, we have a number of information about it. Uh, we know its format is QZA. It says it's a Chime 2 artifact. We have some information, some limited provenance information already captured here, just so that you can keep track of you know, what this is. But we also have information about its type and its UUID. That's important because Galaxy is going to look at this metadata here, this feature table frequency, and constrain the artifacts you can work with to be only those that are feature table frequencies, relative frequencies, or presence absence. So Galaxy is going to automatically guess your input, um, and you'll have the opportunity to probably correct that. And so always make sure you're paying attention to what input Galaxy is actually set and make sure that's what you want. Um, we can also add metadata. So we might select metadata from a TSV or from an artifact. Here's our TSV. So in this case, I only have two things, and it's correctly guessed that those are the ones I want to use. So we could execute that. And so we see something has been added to the queue. So while we're watching, we see this is generating. We see it's going to be labeled three colon some stuff. And so what that's saying is that this is the third entry in our history. Now, while that's running, oh, there it is. So expanding this, we see this particular uh, result is a Chime 2 visualization. And what that means is it contains some kind of human readable summary of uh, information. It's not just data itself. And so we can click this very important view at Chime 2 view link to see what's in there. And so this is an example of a visualization. And Chime 2 view is a web application that works in your browser and can download data from elsewhere on the internet or from your computer if you drag and drop. And so since this Galaxy server exists on the internet, it can create URLs which can be used in Chime 2 View, and that just happens automatically. So you just click View at Chime 2 View. We can also download this data. We can, so if I were to download it, I would get this little dialog. Similarly, if I press this little eyeball, view data, we get a download dialog as well. In the future, that might change, but for now, this is the extent to which Galaxy knows how to interact with a QZV. We interacted with editing, so this was our menu here. We can also look at information about this. And so this gives you a bunch of metadata really specific to Galaxy itself, but you can also see tool standard output and the command line that was run. Now, if you've used Chime 2 before, you'll notice that this is not a typical Chime 2 command line command. Um, usually those look like Chime feature table summarize, but this says Q2 Galaxy run feature table summarize, and then this random looking file here. And so what's happening is Galaxy is actually been instructed to call this program instead, which is specifically tailored to Galaxy's tools. And so it's kind of a circle here where Q2 Galaxy generates the tool descriptions that we see on the left here. Then those tool descriptions tell Galaxy, please run Q2 Galaxy run with those arguments. And using that, uh, Q2 Galaxy is able to interpret what it is you're communicating to Galaxy and then turn that into Chime 2 actions, which then do something. Um, elsewhere, we see a bunch of metadata that, again, really isn't too exciting. We have a lot of package dependencies you can see here. We also have at the bottom a dataset peak. Um, and so this is kind of the nitty gritty detail. You can also see that over here. And so these are the two more important elements. Um, OK, so in addition to that, we have the ability to run a job again. And this is super convenient. So if we press this little refresh looking button, what that's going to do is set up basically the same inputs. And Galaxy knows what the inputs were, because if we go back to the last page, the view details, we see that Galaxy has all of these different tool parameters set up to specific values. And some of these look a little crazy. But it's meaningful to Q2 Galaxy, and that's all that matters. 
And so because we have all of these parameters already set up, Galaxy is able to run it again with the same parameters. Now why might you want to do that? Usually it would be because you want to change the parameters in some way. So perhaps we don't want to include sample metadata for some reason. Well, to do that, we might hit this little delete this repeat block button. And so that's going to delete that. And now we're kind of back to the default state where you just insert sample metadata. And maybe we would like to have it email us a notification this time. So we can execute that and I will get an email shortly, which I will promptly ignore, hopefully. So in addition to that, we can visualize some data. Now, this is not going to be particularly useful with Chime 2. In other Galaxy um, workflows, this is a pretty powerful button. But in our case, all Galaxy knows is that maybe it could open an editor. And if we do that, we're going to see a lot of garbage. I don't recommend clicking this button. And especially do not actually edit it because you will corrupt the file. Finally, we can look at tool help, which expands the help text right underneath this box here. And so that's the same information that we can see down here. All right, the last thing we can do is add annotations. Hold on, I'm gonna turn off the help. We can add annotations and tags. So an annotation is just some note to yourself and that can be helpful. And a tag is some, you know, basically it's 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 a like a hashtag where you're like, this is my let's call this, let's create a viz tag. So now I could find all my vizs if I wanted. Um, this is not super useful for Chime 2 necessarily, but it's very helpful in some other Galaxy workflows where a lot of sample management is handled through tags because what will happen is these tags will basically stick together as you start running through analyses and you'll accumulate tags based on upstream processing. So if you have a tag per sample, suddenly it's very easy to tell what samples were used in some result. Now in Chime 2, we keep all of our samples within basically one artifact, so this isn't super interesting, but I want to point it out as a feature that Galaxy has. You can also remove the tag. And that's basically it for interacting with the history. We can look at history, we can rename history, we can swap histories and create new histories. So I could create a new one here, and now I have an unnamed history. One more important thing with histories is collections. So I'm just going to move that over there so we can look at it. So what a collection is, is kind of like a mini history where this, this entry is a list with 82 items in it. If I expand it, it doesn't actually expand like the others. Instead, it takes us to a sub history. And so here we see all of these files. So this is data we'll be working with in the tutorial, but it's important to know how to enter a um, collection and also how to leave it. And so we would just hit back to unnamed history. And so now we're back out. The other pretty exciting feature that Galaxy has, in addition to all of these um, tool interfaces, is workflows. Now I don't have any right now, but if I wanted to, I would go here. And I'm actually going to delete this one. No, nope, that, that bookmarks it. As you can see, it is now bookmarked. Um, there we go. So you click on this. I had forgotten. And so we can do a number of things, such as edit, copy, download, rename, share, view. I'm going to delete it, and we'll start this from scratch. So I'm going to create a workflow. I'm going to call this my workflow. And what this gives us is a canvas that we can work with. And so we can combine different steps. We can set up inputs. We could set up imports. And we can generally glue different actions together. So we could glue together DMUX EMP paired. 
with, let's say, data2, denoise paired. And so in this canvas, we have these little wiggly lines, which we can connect. And so we see that this is per sample sequences. That probably goes there. We see these are error correction details. I don't even care about those. And then we get these further outputs. And so you can chain these together. If you wanted to parameterize them, you would click on it. And we'll see that uh, Galaxy is already upset that we haven't included some required parameters. So we should pay attention to those. Here's all of the other parameters that we could change. And so this is just like that tool window, but in the sidebar now. We can also rename outputs. We can add tags, remove tags. There's a whole lot you can do. And then once you're basically happy with your workflow, you could save it. You can change options, or you could run it. So let's look at workflow options. We could do auto layout. That's pretty cool. So that tries to make it reasonable to look at. You could upgrade all workflow steps. That's only interesting if your Galaxy administrator has um, updated the tools in between when you started this and when you um, actually run it again. And obviously, there's running. So that's a workflow. Um, we go back to workflows. Yeah, let's, nope, wrong button. We can see it's right here. And you could share those. So that is the quick tour of Galaxy. Um, overall, it's a really convenient interface to work with. It is entirely web-based and can be self-hosted. In this case, we have a central host, but you could run this, for example, on your own computer. The only thing that wouldn't work is when you look at something like this, the view at Chime 2 view links will only work if you set up some very specific things and place your Galaxy server on the internet, which is what we've done. If you'd like to learn more about that, you can um, let us know and we're happy to explain it. But you will still be able to certainly download all of these and then view them in the normal way. All right, that is the tour of Galaxy. Thank you.